The Return from Exile Introduction to the Return The conclusion of the 70-year Babylonian captivity marked a pivotal moment in the history of Israel, a moment imbued with both political and spiritual significance. The Persian Empire, under the leadership of King Cyrus, emerged as a beacon of hope for the exiled Jews. As foretold by the prophet Isaiah, King Cyrus issued a decree that permitted the return of the Jewish exiles to their homeland, Jerusalem, and sanctioned the reconstruction of the temple. The historic return was not merely a physical relocation, it was a profound spiritual renewal, a rekindling of faith and identity. The narrative of the Book of Esther underscores this divine providence, revealing how God's protective hand remained over his people, even those who stayed behind in Persia. Review of the Exile Three Deportations The Babylonian captivity unfolded in three significant deportations, its deepening the crisis of the Kingdom of Judah. Number one, 605 BC, the first deportation. The initial wave of exile in 605 BC saw the deportation of Daniel and other members of Judah's elite to Babylon. This event is vividly described in Daniel 1, 1 to 6, where the young Daniel and his companions were taken to serve in the Babylonian court, symbolizing the loss of the kingdom's intellectual and noble strength. Number 2, 597 BC, the second deportation. In 597 BC, King Jehoiakim was captured, marking the second significant exile event, 2 Chronicles 36, 5, 6. Shortly thereafter, Jehoiakim, the young king, along with his mother, wife, officials, and other prominent citizens, were also exiled. 2 Chronicles 36, 9-10, 2 Kings 24, 15, 17. This deportation father stripped Judah of its leadership and royal heritage. Number 3, 586 BC, the fall of Jerusalem. The final and most devastating deportation occurred in 586 BC, following prolonged siege that culminated in the fall of Jerusalem. The city was razed, the temple destroyed, and the majority of its inhabitants were taken into captivity, leaving only the poorest people behind to tend to the desolate land. Second King 25 This catastrophic event marked the complete dismantling of Judah as a sovereign state. Daniel 9, 70 weeks The prophet Daniel in his ninth chapter presents a profound vision of 70 weeks or 70 sets of seven years that encompasses the faith of the Jewish people and ultimately points to the coming of the Messiah. This prophecy highlights the significant spiritual failure of the Jews, their neglect in observing the sabbatical years, which required them to release their slaves and allow the land to rest every seventh year. Their disobedience in this regard led to their own enslavement and exile, a divine punishment intended to restore balance and justice. Jesus, the Spiritual Return the concept of return extends beyond the physical act of coming back to the land. It encompasses a spiritual reawakening and reconciliation with God. Jesus Christ epitomized this call for a spiritual return. His invitation, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11.28 Resonates deeply with his experience of the exile. Just as the Jews were called back to Jerusalem, so Jesus calls all believers to return to God, offering rest and renewal for their souls. Disorientation Social and Cultural Upheaval The exile and subsequent return brought about significant social and cultural disorientation. During the Babylonian captivity, the land of Judah was left primarily to the poor peasants while the aristocracy and many skilled workers were taken to Babylon. This left a void that was partially filled by new settlers in the northern kingdom who intermarried with the remaining Jews, creating the Samaritans. These Samaritans, who developed a distinct identity, were often seen as religious and ethnic outsiders 
by the returning Jew. Resistance and Rebuilding Upon their return, the Jews faced the daunting task of rebuilding their lives, their city, and their temple. This was not merely a physical reconstruction, but also a re-establishment of their religious and cultural identity. One significant challenge was the resistance to the help offered by the Samaritans. The returning Jews viewed intermarriages with the Samaritans as a violation of divine command and a compromise of their purity. Ezra 9 This tension underscored the broader struggle to reassert their distinctiveness in a changed and often hostile environment. The Book of Ezra, Reformation and Redirection The Book of Ezra provides a detailed account of the efforts to restore the temple and the community's spiritual life. Under the leadership of Zerubbabel and later Ezra, the returnees faced numerous obstacles, including opposition from neighboring people and internal dissent. Ezra's reform were particularly focused on renewing the covenant with God, emphasizing adherence to the law and the rejection of foreign influences. Conclusion Lessons from the Return The return from exile is a rich tapestry of physical, spiritual, and communal renewal. It serves as a powerful reminder of God's faithfulness and importance of obedience and repentance. The narrative demonstrates that while the path to restoration is fraught with challenges, it is also filled with opportunities for profound growth and deeper faith. The historical return to Jerusalem foreshadows the ultimate spiritual return offered through Jesus Christ, calling all believers to find rest and renewal in Him. By reflecting in this significant period, we can draw valuable lessons about resilience, faith, and the unchanging nature of God's promises. The return from exile is not just a historical event, but a timeless call to seek spiritual renewal and to trust in God's enduring care and guidance. The Return, the Reorientation the return from exile was not merely a physical journey back to Jerusalem. It was a profound spiritual renewal and reorientation towards God. The prophet Ezekiel captured this essence vividly in Ezekiel 33, 10-11, where he called the Jews to repent and live. As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. This call to repentance was an invitation to renew their covenant with Adonai, to turn away from their previous sins, and to embrace the life of obedience and faithfulness. Ezekiel 33, 10-11, Repentance and Life Ezekiel's prophecy was a pivotal message during the exile, urging the people to recognize the gravity of their sins, and the opportunity for redemption. The message emphasized God's desire for the salvation of His people rather than their destruction. It was a reminder that despite their exile, God's love and mercy remained accessible to them. The call to repentance was not only a pathway to return to their homeland, but also a spiritual awakening to renew their covenant relationship with God. This theme of repentance and renewal is central to understanding the broader narrative of the return from exile. Three Returns and Reorientation The return from exile unfolds in three significant phases, each focusing on a critical aspect of Jewish life, worship, adherence to the Torah, and community security. These phases were led by key figures who played instrumental role in re-establishing the Jewish identity and faith. Number 1. Worship Zerubbabel Rebuild the Temple The first phase of the return centered on the restoration of worship through the rebuilding of the temple led by Zerubbabel. The temple was the heart of Jewish religious life and its destruction has been a devastating blow to the community's spiritual and cultural identity. Zerubbabel efforts to rebuild the temple were not just about reconstructing a physical structure but also about restoring the place where God's presence dwelt among his people. Ezra 3.2 records that Zerubbabel and his fellow leaders began to rebuild the altar of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings on it as prescribed in the law of Moses. 
The rebuilding process faced numerous challenges, including opposition from the surrounding people and internal discouragement. Yet Zerubbabel leadership and perseverance inspired the people to overcome these obstacles. The completion of the temple signified a renewed commitment to worship and to adherence to God's commandments. It was a tangible sign of God's restored favor and presence among His people. Second, Word, Ezra, and the Torah. The second phase of the return focused on re-establishing the Torah's prominence through the leadership of Ezra. Known as a skilled scribe and devoted priest, Ezra was tasked with the teaching the law to the people, thereby renewing their covenantal relationship with God. In Nehemiah 8, 2-3, Ezra is depicted as reading the book of the law to the assembly of men, women, and all who could understand. This public reading and explanation of the Torah were crucial to reorienting the community towards a life governed by God's law. Ezra's role is often likened to that of a second Moses, as he played a crucial part in guiding the, the people back to the life of obedience and devotion. His efforts were not limited to merely spreading the Torah. He also instituted reforms to address intermarriage and other practices that had led the community away from their distinct identity as God's chosen people. Ezra's work underscored the importance of the Torah as the foundation of Jewish life and faith, ensuring that the people understood and adhered to its teachings. Number 3. Wall Nehemiah rebuilt the Jerusalem wall. The third phase of the return involved the reconstruction of Jerusalem's wall under the leadership of Nehemiah. The walls of Jerusalem were more than just physical barriers. They symbolized the security and identity of the Jewish community. Nehemiah 1.11 describes Nehemiah's deep concern for the state of Jerusalem and his prayer for God's favor as he sought permission from the Christian king to return and rebuild the city of wall. Nehemiah's efforts were crucial in providing the community with a sense of security and stability. The reconstruction of the wall allowed the inhabitants of Jerusalem to defend themselves against external threats and to live with a renewed sense of identity and purpose. Nehemiah's leadership also involved organizing the community, addressing social injustices, and reinforcing the spiritual and moral fabric of the society. Ezra and Nehemiah's books, originally one, provided a comprehensive account of this restoration effort. They detailed the challenges faced and the triumphs achieved in the process of rebuilding the Jewish community and worship. The combined effort of Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah highlighted the multifaceted nature of the return from exile, encompassing physical reconstruction, spiritual renewal, and social reorganization. Conclusion Integrating the Lessons of the Return and Reorientation The return from exile is a powerful narrative that underscores the theme of repentance, renewal, and restoration. It illustrates how God's people, despite their failings, can find their way back to Him through sincere repentance and obedience. The leadership of figures like Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah was instrumental in guiding the community through the transformative period. Number 1. Spiritual Renewal The rebuilding of the temple under Zerubbabel emphasized the importance of worship and the centrality of God's presence in the life of His people. It serves as a reminder that true renewal begins with restoring our relationship with God through worship and obedience. Number 2. Adherence to God's Word Ezra's establishment of the Torah's prominence highlights the necessity of branding out lives in God's Word. Understanding and applying the scripture is essential for maintaining covenantal relationship with God and living according to His will. Number 3. Community and Identity Nehemiah's reconstruction of the walls of Jerusalem symbolizes the importance of security and identity in the life of a community. He teaches us that physical and social structures are vital for providing stability and fostering a sense of belonging and purpose. Reflecting on the return from exile, we can draw valuable lessons about resilience, faith, and the unchanging nature of God's promises. This historical narrative serves as timeless call to spiritual renewal, trusting God's providence, 
and work diligently towards restoring our communities and faith. The return from exile is not merely a past event, but an ongoing invitation to embrace a life of repentance, obedience, and renewal in our journey with God. The Return, the Renewal The return from exile was a monumental event in Cuba's history, marking not only the physical return to Jerusalem, but also significant spiritual renewal. The prophet Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 33, 10-11, captured the essence of this return, urging the people to repent and live. As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked uh, turn from their ways and live. This return was a call to renew their covenant with Adonai, turning away from their previous sin and embracing life of obedience and faithfulness. Supplemental Book Prophets Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi the period of restoration after the return from exile saw the emergence of several key prophetic voices who played crucial roles in guiding and encouraging the Jewish community. Agai, Zechariah, and Malachi were prophets who addressed different aspects of the people's lives and their relationship with God during this critical time. Agai. Agai's ministry was primarily focused on motivating the people to rebuild the temple. After the initial excitement of returning to Jerusalem, the people became complacent, neglected the reconstruction of the temple. Haggai challenged this complacency, reminding them of the importance of the temple as the center of their worship and identity. In Haggai 1, 5 he questioned, Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while the house remains in ruin? Haggai's message was clear. The physical rebuilding of the temple was essential for the spiritual renewal of the community. His prophetic call sparked the people into action, leading to the eventual completion of the temple. Zechariah Zechariah's prophecies complemented Haggai by providing a broader vision of hope and restoration. He offered a sense of vision that reassured the people of God's ongoing presence and plans for Jerusalem. Zechariah emphasized that the building of the temple was not just a physical task, but a sign of God's renewed favor in the beginning of a new era. In Zechariah 4, 6, he famously declared, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty, highlighting the spiritual foundation of their effort. Zechariah's prophecies also pointed towards the future messianic kingdom, giving the people hope and a vision for a restored and prosperous Jerusalem. Malachi Malachi's ministry addressed the moral and spiritual decay that had set in among the people. Despite the rebuilding of the temple, Malachi observed that the community was falling into patterns of neglect and corruption. He condemned the priests for their lack of reverence and people for their unfaithfulness, calling for a return to genuine worship and obedience. In Malachi 3.1, he foretold the coming of a messenger who would prepare the way for the Lord, urging the people to repent and purify their lives. Malachi's prophecy served as a wake-up call, reminding the community of the covenantal responsibilities and the need for ongoing spiritual renewal. Esther The book of Esther provides a unique perspective on God's providence and care for his people during the time of exile. Set in the Persian Empire, the story of Esther highlights the heroism and faithfulness of a Jewish woman who rose to become queen and played a crucial role in preventing the annihilation of her people. Esther's courage and wisdom, particularly in Esther 4, 14, where Mordechai tells her, And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this? illustrate the divine orchestration behind the event. As her story underscores the theme of God's hidden yet active presence, ensuring the survival and well-being of his people, even in a foreign land. Her action not only saved the Jewish community in Persia, but also reinforced the idea that God's care extends beyond the borders of Israel. Esther's narrative is a testament to the power of individual faith and courage in the face of adversity, 
and it serves as an enduring reminder of God's providential care. New World Power, Persia The rise of the Persian Empire under Cyrus the Great marked a significant shift in the geopolitical landscape of the ancient Near East. Cyrus' policies were notably different from those of the previous empires, particularly in its approach to the conquered people and their religion. In contrast to the Assyrians and the Babylonians who often enforced harsh measures and deportation, Cyrus promoted a policy of religious tolerance and restoration. Cyrus Decree Cyrus Decree, as recorded in Ezra 1, 1 1-4, allowed the exiled nation, including the Jews, to return to their homeland and rebuild their temple. This decree was a fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy, Isaiah 44-28, where Cyrus is called God's shepherd, who would facilitate the rebuilding of Jerusalem and the temple. Cyrus' policy not only enabled the Jews to return to Jerusalem, but also provided them with the necessary resources to undertake the reconstruction effort. His support was instrumental in the physical and spiritual restoration of the Jewish community. Religious Freedom and Autonomy Under Persian rule, the Jews enjoyed a significant degree of religious freedom and autonomy. This period allowed for the flourishing of Jewish religious life and the establishment of structures that would support their community for generations. The Persian policy of promoting local governance and respecting local customs helped the Jews to reestablish their identity and practices without fear of persecution. This environment of tolerance and support played a crucial role in the successful rebuilding of the temple and the reinvigoration of Jewish worship and community life. Conclusion Lessons of Re New World The return from exile and as narrated through the supplemental books and the prophetic voices of Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, along with the providential story of Esther and the favorable policies of the Persian Empire, provides a rich tapestry of themes and lessons. This period of restoration is marked by significant spiritual and communal renewal, driven by the prophetic call to action, courage in the face of adversity, and supported geopolitical conditions. Number one, prophetic guidance. The messages of Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi emphasize the importance of responding to God's call, whether in rebuilding a physical structure, renewing spiritual commitment, or addressing moral and ethical lapses. Their prophecies provide timeless lessons on the necessity of aligning our actions with God's will and the power of hope and vision in times of reconstruction. Number two, divine providence. The story of Esther highlights God's providential care and the significant impact of individual courage and faithfulness. It serves as a powerful reminder that God's plan often unfolds through ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances. Number three, supportive leadership. The role of Cyrus, the Persian Empire, in facilitating the return from exile underscores the importance of supportive leadership and policies that promote freedom and restoration. It highlights the potential for positive change when leaders prioritize the well-being of the autonomy of their people. Reflecting on this period, we can draw valuable insights into the nature of spiritual renewal, the power of prophetic leadership, and the ensuring presence of God's providence. The return from exile is not just a historical event, but an ongoing invitation to embrace renewal, faith, and courageous action in our own lives and communities. The return, theme of exile in the Bible. The theme of exile is a recurring and significant motive throughout the Bible, symbolizing both physical displacement and spiritual estrangement from God. The return from Babylonian exile as documented in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah mirrors the earlier Exodus narrative, offering profound theological insights and lessons for contemporary believers. Comparison with Exodus The return from Babylonian exile evokes strong parallels in the Exodus narrative a foundational story of liberation and covenant in Jewish tradition. Both events involve a journey from bondage to freedom, facilitated by divine intervention. However, unlike the negative portrayal of Pharaoh in the Exodus story, the Persian kings, particularly Cyrus, are depicted positively. 
Tyrus' decree allowing the Jews to return and rebuild the temple is seen as a fulfillment of scatological prophecy. Everything in New Exodus, Isaiah 60. The comparison underscores a significant shift in the Jewish understanding of divine deliverance. While Exodus from Egypt was marked by miraculous plagues and dramatic escapes, the return from Babylonian exile was facilitated through diplomatic means and political decrees. This contrast highlights the evolving nature of God's interaction with His people, demonstrating that divine deliverance can come through various channels, including international policies and human agency. Problem of Complacency Despite the miraculous return and the opportunity to rebuild their homeland, the returning exiles faced a problem of complacency. The initial fervor and enthusiasm gave way to indifference and neglect, particularly concerning the reconstruction of the temple. Haggai's message The prophet Haggai directly addressed the issue of complacency. In Haggai 1.4, he chastised the people for prioritizing their own homes over the rebuilding of the temple. Is it a time for you yourself to be living in your panelled houses while this house remains a ruin? Haggis message is a call to action, urging the community to recognize their misplaced priorities and the resulting divine displeasure manifesting in poor harvest and economic hardship. Haggai's prophecy highlights the interconnectedness of spiritual commitment and material well-being. The neglect of the temple, the central place of worship, was not just a physical oversight, but a symptom of deeper spiritual apathy. Haggai's call to rebuild the temple was a call to restore their relationship with God, emphasizing that true prosperity and blessing come from faithful obedience and worship. First Return Zerubbabel rebuilds the temple. The first significant return from exile was led by Zerubbabel, who undertook the monumental task of rebuilding the temple. The spirit was marked both by external opposition and internal challenges, reflecting the complex nature of restoration. Obstacles The rebuilding process faced significant obstacles, both from external forces and within the community. Samaritans who offered to help with the construction were but rejected, became adversaries, creating political and social tension. Additionally, the returning Jews themselves struggled with complacency and discouragement. Prophets Haggai and Zechariah played crucial roles in motivating the people. Haggai's direct admonition and Zechariah's vision of hope and future glory provided the necessary encouragement to persevere. Despite these challenges, the temple was eventually completed in 515 BC, as recorded in Ezra 16. This completion was not just a construction milestone, but a spiritual triumph symbolizing the renewed covenant between God and His people. Meaning for us, Catechism number 115 to 117. The rebuilding of the temple holds profound theological significance, both in the literal and spiritual senses. According to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, numbers 115 to 117, the temple represents God's dwelling place, a microcosm of heaven and earth, and the center of sacrificial worship. Literal sense. In the literal sense, the efforts of Zerubbabel and the community to rebuild the temple illustrate their commitment to restoring proper worship and their identity as God's chosen people. This historical account provides valuable lessons on perseverance, faith, and the importance of prioritizing spiritual obligations. Spiritual sense. Spiritually, the temple points to Christ as the new temple. Jesus, in his incarnation, becomes the ultimate dwelling place of God among humanity. He is the perfect sacrifice and the mediator of a new covenant. For believers, this means recognizing their bodies as temples of the Holy Spirit, called to live justly in accordance with God's will. This dual understanding of the temple enriches our appreciation of the biblical narrative and its application to our lives. Second return, Ezra returns and teaches. The second significant return from exile led by Ezra, scribe and priest, who focused on the spiritual and moral reformation of the community. Ezra's return marked a pivotal moment in reestablishing the Torah as a foundation of Jewish life and practice. 
the need for the law. Israel's primary mission was to reestablish the importance of the Torah, addressing issues such as intermarriage with pagan and calling the people to purify in obedience. Ezra 7.10 captures this dedication. For Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord and to teaching his decrees and laws in Israel. Ezra's reorientation is crucial for the people's spiritual renewal. By reinstating the Torah's authority, Ezra sought to create a community grounded in God's laws and distinct from surrounding pagan cultures. This focus on the law was not merely about idealistic observance, but about restoring a covenantal relationship with God, characterized by faithfulness and holiness. Conclusion Lessons on Restoration The theme of exile and return in the Bible provides rich theological insights and practical lessons for contemporary believers. The narratives of Ezra and Nehemiah, along with the prophetic messages of Agai and Segariah, offers a multifaceted view of restoration and encompasses physical rebuilding, spiritual renewal, and communal reformation. Number 1. Divine Deliverance The comparison with Exodus underscores that God's deliverance can manifest in diverse ways, whether through miraculous intervention or political decrees. This teaches us to remain open to the various means by which God may work in our life. Number two, prioritizing worship. Haggai's message against the complacency reminds us of the importance of prioritizing our spiritual commitments. Neglecting our relationship with God can lead to broader consequences in our personal and communal life. Number three, perseverance and faith. The obstacles faced by Jerubabel and the community highlights the need for perseverance in the face of adversity. Prophetic encouragement and shared vision to hope can sustain us through challenging times. Number four, living as temple of the Holy Spirit. The theological significance of the temple calls us to recognize our bodies as temples of the Holy Spirit. This understanding challenges us to live lives of justice, holiness, and obedience, reflecting God's presence within us. Number five, importance of God's word. Ezra's emphasis on the Torah underscores the centrality of God's word in guiding our lives. Studying, observing, teaching God's laws are essential for maintaining a covenantal relationship with Him. By reflecting on these themes, we can draw valuable lessons for our spiritual journey. The return from exile is not just a historical event, but an ongoing invitation to embrace ex restoration, renewal, faithful living in our relationship with God. Challenges of the return from exile, Ezra decree, and other lapses. Disparity of cult, Catechism number 1634. Mixed marriages, particularly those between a Catholic and baptized non-Catholic, can present unique challenges and opportunities for unity in Christ. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 1634, acknowledges these difficulties, noting that disparity of cult can pose serious obstacles to the harmonious practice of faith within the family. However, with faith, mutual respect, and a commitment to shared values, these marriages can become our witnesses to the unity and love of Christ called his followers to embrace. New Testament Guidance The New Testament provides guidance on how to navigate the complexities of mixed marriages. In 1 Corinthians 7, 10-15, Paul addresses believers who are married to non-believers, emphasizes the importance of maintaining the marriage bond if the non-believing spouse is willing to live in peace, stating, For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife, and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. 1 Corinthians 7.14 This passage underscores the potential for a believing spouse positively influence the faith and sanctity of the family, encouraging patience, understanding, and steadfastness in living out one's faith within the marriage. Third return, Nehemiah rebuilds the North Jerusalem wall. The third significant return from exile was led by Nehemiah primary focus 
the reconstruction of the Jerusalem Wall. This task was crucial for the physical security and communal identity of the Jewish people. Importance of Wall The city was in ancient times vital for the security and identity of a city. They protected inhabitants from external threats and provided a sense of order and belonging. For the returning exiles, rebuilding Jerusalem's wall was not just a practical necessity, but also a symbolic act of reclaiming their heritage and reestablishing their presence as God's chosen people. Nehemiah's approach. Nehemiah's approach to rebuilding that wall was both practical and spiritually vigilant. Faced with opposition from surrounding enemies, he instructed the worker to carry out the construction with a shovel in one hand and a sword in the other. This dual approach symbolizes the need for believers to be both proactive in their effort and vigilant in their spiritual defenses. The shovel represents the practical work of rebuilding and restoring, while the sword symbolizes the need for spiritual vigilance and readiness to defend against any threat to their faith and community. Nehemiah's leadership and the determination inspire the people to overcome significant challenges demonstrating that communal efforts rooted in faith and perseverance can lead to remarkable achievements. The completion of the walls provided the Jewish community with the security and confidence needed to flourish and reestablish the religious practices and social structures. Malachi's Prophecy The prophet Malachi delivered a series of stern warning and hopeful prophecies during the post-exilic period. These messages addressed the spiritual and moral lapses of the people urging them to return to faithful worship and honor God appropriately. Robbing God One of Malachi's central themes was the people's failure to give God the honor and offering he deserved. In Malachi 3, 7-11, he warned against robbing God by withholding tithes and offerings. He urged the people to bring the full tithe into the storehouse, promising God would pour our abundant blessings in return. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to restore it. Malachi 3.10 This call of faithful giving emphasizes the reciprocal relationship between God and His people, where faithfulness and generosity would uh, be met with divine favor and provision. The coming of Elijah Malachi also prophesied the coming of Elijah, who would prepare the way for the Lord. In Malachi 4.5, he foretold, See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. This prophecy was understood to anticipate the arrival of the messianic figure, who would restore righteousness and renew the covenant relationship. In Christian theology, this prophecy is seen as being fulfilled in the ministry of John the Baptist who prepared the way for Jesus Christ, the ultimate fulfillment of God's promise of salvation and restoration. Conclusion The return from exile is a powerful symbol of hope and restoration, both historically and spiritually. For the Jewish people, the hope of returning to Jerusalem remained a central aspect of their identity and their faith through the centuries culminating in the establishment of the modern state of Israel, 1948. This enduring hope is poignantly expressed in their national anthem, Hatikva, which speaks of the hope of return to their ancestral homeland. Spiritual Restoration for Christians For Christians, the return from exile serves an allegory for spiritual journey of restoration and renewal. Just as the Jews to rebuild the temple and city walls, Christians are called to restore the temple of their heart, rebuilding a life of faith, holiness, and commitment to God's command. This spiritual restoration involves turning away from sin, renewing our covenant with God, and living out our faith through actions of love, justice, and generosity. Trusting in God's promises, both the historical return from exile and the spiritual call to renewal emphasize the importance of trusting in God's promises and provision. Whether facing external opposition or internal complacency, believers are encouraged to remain 
steadfast in their faith, trusting that God will provide the strength, resources, and guidance needed for restoration. The stories of Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah, along with the prophetic messages of Agai, Zechariah, and Malachi, offers timeless lessons on the power of faith, perseverance, and divine intervention in the journey towards spiritual renewal and communal restoration. Thank you for joining us in this insightful journey through episode 17, The Return from Exile. We've explored how the end of the Babylonian captivity marked a significant moment of both physical and spiritual renewal for the Jewish people. From the leadership of Zerubbabel, Ezra, Nehemiah, to the prophetic voices calling for repentance, this period in history demonstrates the power of faith, resilience, and God's enduring promises. We hope these reflections offered you deeper insights into the significance of returning not just to a homeland, but to a renewed covenant with God. Be sure to stay tuned for episode 18, where we'll cover the rise of Greece world power, explore the influence of religion, and understand how this shaped the history and faith of God's people. You won't want to miss it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any updates. See you in the next episode.